Sagittarius, it's me Stormy and here's your horoscope for October 2018. And Sagittarius, before we jump in, make sure you take advantage of the 2018 holiday gift that is already up. You can click in the description box down below. I believe that appointments are just available now in January, but feel free to grab the spots that are open and let's talk about what's going on because in November, there's a lot going on that happens to your sign. Jupiter's going to jump over there. It's going to be it's going to be a time. So let's make sure that we talk about that stuff, okay? But before that, let's handle this October business. So right here in October, I actually think that this is a month for you where, first of all, we're going to clean out some hidden closets. We're going to clean out some hidden emotions, some things that you've been holding on. You've got a full moon happening in the sixth house, which really gave me the sense and the kind of theme for you this month, Sag, that this is about shedding what's no longer serving you. And for some of you very specifically, this could be looking like shedding weight as well, right? So we'll get to that. But first and foremost, Venus is going to be retrograde this month in the sign of Scorpio. So just back here in your 12th house space. So when Venus is retrograde, I hope you checked out my Venus retrograde video. If you haven't, it's the very first one in the October playlist. Please check it out. But when Venus is going retrograde, we're gonna relook over value, romance, finance okay now this being in the sign of scorpio we're going to dig deep this is also in your 12th house we're going to see if there are hidden emotions hidden agendas hidden motives any of those kinds of things going on so that you can reset them reset the value of them so that when venus comes out of retrograde you're ready to move forward right you want this energy set and ready to move forward when it gets to your sign so you can be magnetic so you can be like oh i'm sad sorry for all the cute but here i am you know you want to be prepared to take it out and use the, take the value for a spin okay now <clears throat> venus and scorpio in your 12th house here one of the things i keep thinking of is not only is this the most private house that we've got right but for you you may also feel like you're needing a little bit more privacy this month you need a little bit more quiet you maybe need time to recharge while you're looking back over some things in your past this is a transitional house this is the house of endings completions transitions hidden things being from down here i will tell you with the venus retrograde of course venus is phenomenal for bringing back old romance right old relationships even if it's just in thought even if the person doesn't actually blow back into your life and you're reconciling this relationship it could also be just a time where the thought of them is coming back and you're realizing you no longer need that attachment. You're ready to let it go. Um, I'm getting um, info here, so I don't know who this is for, but this could be someone is going to make peace with someone who passed in their life, maybe of some kind of substance abuse or um, mental illness or something like that. Uh, I'm also seeing a past, maybe a passing of a, child or a very innocent energy so if that's you this could be something you're actually getting to make peace with and get free from as we're working through this venus through scorpio energy now where i also think that this is very good is for finding finances or having finances come to you when venus is direct that you didn't know were there right you know maybe it's just that five dollar bill you lost in the couch or you put money someplace or you put that ring that was your favorite ring someplace or you were out and you dropped your necklace and it comes back right it could definitely be something coming back i think that venus retrograde for you in this 12th house space as well because the 12th house is going to be very busy this month it's going to be a time for you to relook at your sixth sense you know is your headlight on here are you connected to your six senses or are you just walking around using your five let's open that psychic channel for you not so that you can hear dead people and walk around you know what I mean you don't need a show and everything unless that that's where you're trying to go but so that you can intuitively see and be in contact with the flow of things that are around you okay so keep that in mind now that's going to be happening on the fifth of the month so again if you need some private time you feel like you're doing soul searching you feel like you are a bit more reflective it's okay you're trying to make peace with the quietest pieces of who you are if you are a student or an investigator of some type and you're looking for information um, you could see some information coming back at this time i don't know that it necessarily gets 
completely uncovered, but you may have a lead into it in some way, shape, or form. So my investigators, please pay attention to that. Okay, when we get to the eighth of the month, we're having a new moon happen in Libra, and this is a reset for you. The new moon, we plant these seeds of intention of where we wanna go next, right? We plant those seeds, we put them in the ground, we have no idea exactly how they're going to bloom, but we know that they will. We believe that they will. And so what we do, you plant those seeds of intention, and then you water, you give it sunlight, you don't over smush the dream or the vision or the seed, right? You just do it and you tend to it little bit, little bit by little bit. And this is happening in your 11th house, which tells me it's time to have new groupings, new associations, new friendships, new social things in your life, but you cannot just sit back and act like the magic is just gonna happen. You have to participate. You've got to give that seed sunlight, water, attention, anything else that needs to grow, but you don't have to overstimulate it either, right? So put yourself out there. If you're trying to look for that new job, you're ready to have your finances go in a different direction. Hell, you are the one thinking about an old romance. Reach out. Use your socials, provided you don't do any harm, correct? Right? Right? So look at your opportunities here to bring even a new tribe into your life. Are you trying to actually shed these things, put them down and release? And you could use some love. You could use some support. The last thing we need when we're transforming and transitioning is shame or people who can't greet us with compassion, right? So are you surrounded by people who do that? Are you surrounded by people who lift you up? I think those are great questions to ask here. Now, Libra is about relationships, first of all, so we know you're going to have new people coming in, but it's also about harmony and where in your friendship zones, in your social zones, in your greater cry to humanity, where is your equilibrium off? Where do you need balance, Right? I think this is a great new moon for you to ask yourself too, Sagittarius, where are you giving too much and where can you achieve some balance with that, okay? All right, when we get to the 10th, we've got Mercury now moving into Scorpio. So Scorpio is very busy already. We've got Jupiter, who's our biggest benefic planet up there. Venus, who's our smaller benefic planet and is retrograde. And now we've got Mercury, our savvy communication, decision-making of the mind, pattern detecting, strategy energy here in Scorpio in your 12th house. Now, the one thing I will tell you about Mercury and Scorpio, it doesn't always make you, um, your, your words are not always as kind, right? Like they're not always as soft and gentle even being here in the 12th house but this makes you a phenomenal observer you're needing to make peace with something in this past place you've got to observe you've got to look around you've got to watch for these details and mercury is not retrograde yet so you've got good eyes on the scene you've got venus flipped around showing you the value of things you've got jupiter with his big old smile up there showing you the wisdom you have acquired to walk through what you need to walk through right here and mercury is going to help you now i also think that mercury in the 12th house space here um you're speaking the truth here right? You're speaking it. As it's coming up, you're able to speak it. You're able to think it. You're able to, you're able to communicate with some accuracy what's happening here. Now, if this Mercury happens to be you talking to someone from your past, it'll also make you very sincere and very um, clear with what you need to be saying, okay? All right, when we get to the 23rd, now we've got the sun rolling over into Scorpio, okay? So we're getting closer and closer to your birthday time, but not quite yet. But now the sun is here. Wherever the sun is going to go, she wants to bring light, heat, life, vitality, movement. You want wellness in this portion of your chart. So I'm telling you, this is an energy with the Scorpio here. This is transformation. You want to clean out. And this is not the clean out, you guys, where I'm talking about you have to do all of this deep digging and soul searching. It's coming up. The universe is helping it just come up. Let it come up so that you can help wipe it away. You wipe it away by seeing and confronting, right? And this is an opportunity again, you guys, this month for peace, for new direction. It is pointless to just pop yourself out there if you don't have a direction, right? So with peace and clear direction, I think you get to make beautiful movement with this. Um, when we get to the 24th of the month, we've got the full moon happening here in Taurus. Now here we go. Full moon says something needs to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. So we're going to come to a shift. We need to change the direction of something here. Or we need to acknowledge what we need to shift to change the direction of something. In Taurus, my first question for you, and this is not always a comfortable question for a fire sign, but where do you need to reground? 
Where do you need to be grounded? Where are you flitting around too much? That fire energy is beautiful and enthusiastic, but sometimes you've got to just stand your ground in order to make your next move. Sometimes you've got these old financial situations rolling into your life and you have got to ground down and handle them. Sometimes you've got this old romance coming back into your life and you have to be like, look, no, we tried, no. You cannot give me what I want. I can't give you what you want. Or you have to stand your ground against a whole bunch of people telling you it's not going to work out. It's not going to work out and you have to go learn your own lesson. You have to go figure out if this is the thing for you because that's also not wrong. Okay? So, where do you need to ground down, Sag? Okay, now, this is going to be happening in your sixth house most specifically. So in your daily routine, that's the very first thing I think of in the sixth house, your daily routine. Where do you need to bring some grounding here? Where do you need to redo the routine? Are you stuck in the same routine? Um, are you stuck in the same thinking, right? The sixth house is very much so a mental house. And this mental wellness up here is attacking and touching and impacting all of the rest of your body as well. So where do we need a health? your picture here. Where can we bring that to balance? This is also phenomenal for health. Where do you need to make some health adjustments here? Are you losing a little bit of weight? Is it time to shed it? You've been letting go of stuff. This could be a time where you're shedding the weight, you're letting it go, or you're finding a way you're maybe linking up with a new tribe to see how to let something go in this daily routine. See how to let something go in the health, right? And Sag, you rule the thighs. So I would tell you to pay attention at this time. You know, are you burning yourself out? Have you been doing the same kind of exercise, workout, movement, whatever it is, and you're you're feeling tension in your thighs, your lower back? If that's not the thing, maybe you gotta find a new way to move, right? Your body really doesn't care how you move because it can't tell the difference as long as you get your heart rate up. Check in with your spirit what feels right there. Now, one more thing about the sixth house can be great for work. Where do you need to adjust? We've got the social energy. You've just had a new moon, right? These two moons could be connecting and saying, hey, if you want to get that new job, if you want to have this freelance work, if you want that promotion, I need you to adjust your social things. I need you to make some new contacts because it's people who are going to help you climb, Sag, okay? So you may be needing to look at making some new connections here as well and maybe even making some peace at work. Do you need to make some adjustments at work? Because you can't keep fighting with Susan. You just can't, okay? <laughs> so if that's a thing, you know what I mean? Oh, I just got this too. If you are working on that health stuff, we're coming into the holidays and I understand everybody's bringing these juicy, delicious snacks to work. And I understand because I'm a Taurus, so I really feel you. I honestly think you get a little bit of help this season avoiding that and staying on track. So woo woo for that, okay? All right, on the 26th, we've got the Sun and Venus in conjunction. Now they're both in Scorpio, but at this point they're in conjunction. So they're holding hands and working together. This does tell me there's a change in your social life in some way. So probably these new people trying to come in, new connections for you. On the 31st, we've got several things happening. First of all, Venus is gonna take that retrograde on the road. So she's gonna leave Scorpio and move on up into Libra. So again, we've got a balance and a partnership focus, but it is in your 11th house as well. Now, one of the things that I think actually is is so useful about Venus going retrograde in your 11th house is it makes you a little bit easier and warmer um, to get to know in certain situations. If you're get, having to get into some new social situations or confront something or someone from your past, maybe even a friendship, you're warmer. You're more willing to see their point of view. And this is very helpful for you because you've also got Mercury on the 31st moving into your sign, which is very open-minded. This helps these everything together, ties and works together to move you forward. But you've got to be open-minded. You've got to be willing to see a new perspective, which is usually something you're not entirely opposed to. To. But this Mercury moving into your sign is going to be helpful. It's also going to help you communicate out. If you are looking for that new job, you want to put yourself out there differently. You're like, oh, I need to get a little haircut. This may even be something that helps you with that energy as well with Mercury. And I do feel like by the time we arrive at November 1st or 2nd, Sag, you've got a pretty big decision that you'll be making based on the movements that happen this month. So we'll talk a ton about that as we get into November, okay? I hope you have an absolutely beautiful month. Whenever there's 12th housework, I really try and send a lot of good vibes to that sign because letting go is not only that it's not easy, but letting go sometimes brings such a level of peace that we're almost surpassed with understanding and that can be as equally confusing as being shrouded and crazy, right? So whatever you're letting go of this month and whatever you're ready to receive in, I'm just sending you a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of love, okay? All right, like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I look forward to seeing you in the weeklies. I'll definitely see you in the monthlies. Make sure you take advantage of that 2018 holiday gift.
I love you guys so much, and I'll see you next month. Bye.